there, it's Kevin from RogueDeckBuilder.com, here with match number three in the cube, holiday cube. I'm on the play, yes I'd like to play first. And this is definitely a keep hand as well, got the skull clamp which is essential for this deck. Uh, lead off with a treetop village and call it good. So this, this hand should allow us to grab quite a bit of uh, cards, unless he's got a answer for the Skull Clamp. Figure of Destiny is, is a worrisome card. It does get quite big. This is a perfect card for me to draw. I could Loam, Skull Clamp, and kill the Loam off, which I think is the better better pull. No, I can't do both of them. So maybe I just String Group Geist here and Swing. And next turn, be able to equip the skull clamp to the Strangler's Geist and swing again. I think that is the right play. So I'm going against a, probably another aggressive deck. I like I like this matchup if it, if that's the case because my mid range deck probably will win out eventually. So here comes a two two, and he will swing. And this turn we will be able to will able to equip the skull clamp and possibly even on the loam line as well. So play out the clamp, equip it to the Geist. Um, I think the, the right move here is probably just to equip again and sit back. Yeah. Or I could I could hit him for four here. Yeah, we'll hit him for four. He's down to 14. We got a Blood Bread Elf online next turn. Uh, not quite a Merry Angel. That double white again is, is causing us problems. Um, don't have a double red for the Seize Gang Commander either. The Loam is now a 2-3, so we, can, we actually can't Skull Clamp it off. So now a 4-4 four, four figure of Destiny. So he's investing everything into that figure. Which is fine, because we'll have a blocker next turn. Uh, it's not quite a flyer yet. There, there's the Genesis, which is awesome if we can figure out a way to get into the graveyard. So maybe the right move here is Bloodbraid Elf, and see if we can cascade into something awesome. Battle Mage. That's fine. We just can cast it, and we can hit it for eight here or seven here which I think is still the right move rather than holding back the string geist. And we do have a blocker as far as the battle mage is concerned. So he's down to a seven, which is getting kind of scary for him. Misha's workshop's not gonna do it, but he can, he can seething song into an eight eight for striker. Is that what he's gonna do? No. And Seething Song into a 710 Sundering. And wow. Yeah, pretty much <laughs> kicks our butt. A Seething Song into destroying all my lands. Okay. Let's see if he gets in here with the. No, he doesn't get in here with the Vigor Destiny. Yeah. Well, that was kind of unfortunate for us, a 7-10, and it doesn't end up hurting his stuff at all. I mean, I could attack in here with the the, the Skull Clamp Stinger Geist, and he has a couple options, either taking the damage here. Yeah, I think that, I think this is the best move, because we can always just Skull Clamp onto our Battle Mage 
to have a blocker up for his, his Titan. But if he blocks, this gives me two cards. If he doesn't block, this four damage, and he's in bolt range eventually. And he's going to have to block him. Okay, so we get two cards here, which is good. So hopefully, yeah, that that is awesome. Now we have a the land we need for next turn. And we'll go ahead and skull clamp our battle mage. Have a blocker up. So figure destiny eventually when he gets six mana is going to be the death of us unless we can figure out a solution for it. That sundering seething song into a sundering titan. Uh, my deck doesn't have the coolest combinations. It's just a very consistent Naya aggro type deck. Uh, <laughs> I'm just getting blown out of the water by these crazy combinations. But I did was able to luck out a win versus match number one, which I shouldn't have won. And match number two, I just got destroyed by the control. But And this isn't looking much better by a, a sundering titan on fourth turn to destroy three different types of my... I mean, it's so good versus my deck because the Taiga, he's actually able to name, you know, what he needed. Uh, so I'm going to attack with this Battle Mage. Definitely going to. That's a... Uh, Fauna Shaman's a good one. Eventually we're going to get back there. Again, he, he either has to take three... Or I, I draw two more cards. In fact, is it worth it to draw? Yeah, it is. Because we can get that Genesis in the graveyard. And the Vengevine. The Vengevine and the Genesis in the graveyard. So we're heal block. We'll draw two more cards. Which is awesome. Throw out a Fauna Shaman and equip... Go ahead and use this right now. Get a Sacred Foundry. Pay two life for it. Throw out a Fauna Shaman and a Loam Lion? Or... A Loam Lion and just equip it. A Fauna Shaman... And equip the Bloodbraid Elf. In this way, we can discard the Genesis. Or maybe the Vengevine. I think the Vengevine is actually the better one to discard at this point. So next turn we can cast the Loam Lion and the Mog War Marshal. And be able to attack with Bloodbraid Elf with Vengevine. Is that even worth it? I think a Merry Angel is the better play. A Merry Angel gives us blockers and um, Skull Clamp targets forever. And nothing has Trample. This dude just has First Strike. Still don't know what he can do. Still doesn't attack. He's leaving everything back, huh? Add three to your mana pool. Only cast artifacts. Okay. So Ven Vengevine can come out next turn. Or I think a Merry Angel is still the right play next turn. I don't know if we need cards here. I don't think we need to attack in with our Bloodbraid Elf. Uh, almost have. He'd have to block though. I don't know what he's having his hand. See, if we cast two things, he'd have to either block the Bloodbraid Elf or the Figure of Destiny. If we cast the Loam Lion and the Mog War Marshal, but I, I I still think the right play here is just the Merry Angel. And do we attack with our Bloodbraid Elf? No, we'll save him back for a blocker. 
and in 5,000 turns, that greater Gar Gargadon is going to come into play. And by that point, I don't, I don't know if we care. I mean, without Trample, nothing in this deck really bothers us. No Trample on that. No Trample on that. No Trample on that. So, gotta assume he's probably got the Mirror Battle Sphere as well, if he's playing the Misha Workshop deck. So, a Red Ramp into Artifacts. Probably has Cough as well. We need to find that red source for that Siege Gang Commander. So we'll see what happens here. Chromox, sure. Not too scary at the moment. I'm in a figure of destiny. One, two, three, four, five, six now. For his figure of destiny. Category that Akrama though. Well yeah, he is definitely a ramp type deck if he wants to get a a chroma out. Fire main. I'll just take four here. I could care less about the fire main. I mean, he could decide to attack the Sundering Titan and his fire main and his figure of destiny, and then I'd have to block one of them. But if that's the case, I will just throw my Mary Angel under the bus here and take four and possibly... Okay, he's just attacking with the Sundering Titan. So definitely throw the Bloodbraid Elf in the way. I don't know why he didn't want to attack with his fire main there. No point not to. Oh, he's holding back. Yeah, he needs to hold back a flyer. I see what he's doing. Uh, first strike, first strike. Okay, so first strike's useless to... So there's our mountain. I don't know if Siege Gang is the right play here. Gives us blockers. So here here comes a 1-1 one -one flyer. That's That's awesome. And I think Siege Gang is the right play as well. Or do we want to throw out a bunch of stuff? Yeah, it's just Siege Gang here. And that way we can take out his Fire Main Angel next turn. Plenty of blockers. Plenty of card advantage with Skull Clamp. And one card, he's only got one card in hand. That figure of destiny now isn't that big of a deal. Neither is the Greater Garga Gargadon. We have eight damage on board actually from the Siege game, but not enough red sources. Got a blocker as far as the bird is concerned. He'll probably just pump up his figure of destiny here. I'm not too concerned with all the goblins. I can chump block with some goblins here. No problem. Got the war marshal. Pride Mage for any artifact that's stupid that comes out. In fact, I can just Pride Mage off that Sundering Titan. And if he swings here... Oh, well, that's game. So Wildfire does end up killing me. No, because the Sundering Titan... Sundering Titan uh, survives. So we uh, this actually might be better for us. So his Figure of Destiny dies. His Fire Maiden dies. Everything I have dies. His Sundering Titan lives... And I go down to one land, but I can... Oh, man, I'm off one. So I need to keep a Sacred Foundry and a Treetop Village. No, I can, I can only... I just need to keep this... I can't keep the Treetop Village.
So we're going to take 7 here. Which is unfortunate because it's going to take me a bit to be able to draw another source for the pride mage. And there it is. So loam lion becomes a 2-3 or nacodal. So loam lion and equip with the skull clamp or do I, do I want to put I better put two blockers out in case he's got a removal spell hey cool and there we go Vengevine comes out and I think I will attack with the Vengevine bring him down to a decent life total I mean, he's gonna gain a life every turn for his fire main and next turn I can kill that Sundering Titan with the uh, Kazali Pride Mage. So we might be able to dig ourselves out of this. Cube is incredibly fun. I just love all the interactions playing with these very powerful cards. Um, cool combinations. They did a very good job on this Holiday Cube so far. I'm liking the cards that I see. I am more of a Naya player as well. This is directly my style. I like kind of a mid-range creature based deck. So I think I like I, I like the deck that I came out, out with. You'll have to tell me in my, my draft video how well I did. Of course this is my first cube draft in a long time. First cube draft for this particular cube. Um, not the best with some of these old school combinations. The power level, some of these black and blue cards and whatnot. There seemed to be a lot of black black cards that were going around for quite a while. No one was picking them up. So, I, I, yeah, I don't think you can attack with this Sundering Titan even here. And it's pretty pretty nutty to be able to put a 2-3 and a 3-3 out and a 4-3 when he wipes my board. Yeah, he's unable to, and it didn't seem like he drew a land here. So, this might be a game here with the Kazali Pride Mage coming out, killing his Sundering Titan. I mean, we could just swing with everything. And he's dead anyway. Ah, there's the Bolt. So, I think that's what we do. We just, we just swing with everything. He blocks the Venge Vine. Well, let's see what happens. Because he's looking at five damage right here. But if he, yeah, he's looking at. He incinerates the Nicotle, take blocks the Venge Vine, and takes two damage. He's still dying to a Lightning Bolt. So let's see if that's what's going to happen. And I hope he's not just delaying the game if he's dead here, because this is annoying. So he sacks it. Uh, that's not going to do. Enters or leaves. Okay, fine. That's fine. So he's going to choose a... Do I have any chance to respond to this? Oh crap, I don't. Ah, that was that was horrible. I should have respond I thought I had a chance to respond respond to it to be able to lightning bolt him. Um that's no good. But he could still be dead here. Cuz that's 5. If he incinerates something, he's down to one card. Oh yeah, okay, the Wild Nakata goes down to a 2. That's no good. Okay. Let's try to fill up. Do we we played a land this turn though, didn't we? That was that was my bad for thinking that I had a chance to respond to that after he targeted or after he named, but I didn't. So, I'll kill off the Nakata, I'll draw two cards. There's a brush land. Um for next turn. Not what I wanted to I didn't want to see a brush land. So, he's still in this game. Barely, though. But 
But again, he's facing, he's still facing six damage next turn. And I do have a play with the Pride Mage. And the Gar Gargadon is getting actually, now he could actually sack everything for his, for his Gargadon. So I might need to leave something back. So just attack my Vengevine and leave my Loam back. I don't know if that's the right play. Hopefully just draw a red source next turn. <laughs> I don't know if that, most of my red sources are actually just one mountain. Three. Oh, does it get haste? This could be just game right here. Can't remember if it gets, if it gets haste or not. So I punted this game thinking I could respond to that trigger. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely punted this game. Um, thinking I could respond to the Sundering Titan trigger and bolt away. But anyway, so we die. And we'll go on to the next one. This guy's really good. Uh, Tin Street Hooligan. Uh, Faith Fetters is actually really good as well. And other than that, nothing else is is very decent. Um, so two cards need to come out. I don't know how much I like Els Elspeth. No, Elspeth's awesome with School Clamp. Um, da -da 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 -da. But I'm on such like a Skull Clamp heavy deck that I don't know if that's greatest. Blaze Blaster's good. Maybe the Ranger again. He just seems like he's the the weakest link here. So we'll take out the Ranger and take out. Oh, I like the Ranger though. Maybe Siege King's a little too late. No, he's just so good too. Wow. Master, Master's a little slow. More pieces is good. All these are good. Let me just take a land elf. Do I need a ramp? Yeah. Maybe a lone lion. If I'm taking out the ranger, maybe a lone lion is better. Blade splicer. Oh, good, 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 good. Really good, really good, really good, really good. Yeah, we'll go like that. Play first. Not too shabby. Got a wild in the cuddle first turn. So we'll do that. Next turn he'll be a 2-2. Two -two. Too bad that wasn't a Taiga. And we need to draw on some lands or a Skull Clamp really bad. Mox Diamond, okay. He's a very ramp deck. See what first turn shenanigans he has. For two. Oh, uh, yeah, very ramp deck. Alright, Artifact Tate, where are you at? That's probably the perfect draw I could have drawn. It'll allow me to go get a Land or Elf if I am still stuck on lands. We'll get in there for two with our Wild Nacatl. Yeah, I got the Vengevine too, so definitely going to activate it next turn. Hopefully draw a Mountain next turn. Sacred Foundry would be the greatest thing to draw. I mean, the dude's already got four lands, though. Look how ramped this is. He'd wildfire me out. 
Maybe I just get a Quasali Pride Mage. Kill that Boral Signet. Oh, yeah. That's going to be the end of us. Well, he's dead. Uh, he'll probably tap down a permanent. That's probably the smartest move. Otherwise, he's just getting a... That's a very expensive Lightning Helix. Very expensive Lightning... Oh, nope, tapping it down. Okay. So it might force us actually to attack it with a Fauna Shaman. I don't know. I mean, if we draw a Lana or Elf, and the Lone Line's out, though. She's getting Commander, not going to do it. Ouch. I, I think I have to do this, though. Vengevine, go get a Lana or Elf. And we didn't draw our land, so we're in trouble. So that second turn of Johnny, was that? Yeah, second turn of Johnny is going to be the death of us. They can included so much ramp in this cube. Tons of signets. You could basically ramp with any any color here. I will attack into that a Johnny now. Man. Urgh. So... Attack into the Johnny. Weedle, weedle it down to something so he can't get double use out of it. Well, he still can get double use out of it. Still no land. And the wrong color of land for, or we have to use the carpools in forest. Hopefully he's got a handful of lands, but I doubt it. I mean, he's already up to six mana. He taps down the Fauna Shaman again, huh? I don't know if that's the right move. Yeah, definitely not the right move because now I can take out the Johnny Vengeance, hopefully. And it didn't do too much damage to me. Alright, so... He, I've got to assume he's got a lot of those high casting stuff. Maybe a Sundering Giant. One, two, three, four, five, six. But he, oh man, he's getting close to being able to play those uh, crazy good cards. Land. No land. Oh, but we will discard that. I don't know if that helps, though. Unless we could just get in there with the Fauna Shaman's two damage. No, that's definitely not worth it. Genesis is just good to get into the graveyard. We die to a wildfire big time next turn. Um, pointless holding back the land or elf because we couldn't cast anything anyway. Land there would have been awesome into a blood braid elf. So four, five, so five damage comes through, puts him down to thirteen. I mean, maybe I, actually maybe I should have held the land or elf back because then I could have I could have rift bolted. Suspended a Rift Bolt. So discard Genesis. Tin Street Hooligan might be the better. Or just War Marshal. Is War Marshal better? Or even Pride Mage? I want something that has a little bit of resilience to when it dies. Uh, to Wildfire, I could ping him down. But I'm thinking that... I'm thinking... Hooligan is the best card. Because I can kill off his ramp next turn. So a million things in his hand, though, works here. Wildfire blows me out of the water. Um, nothing, though. Wow. So I will kill that Boro Signet off next turn. I think he's still trying to ramp. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He can throw out the Sundering Titan. But then I kill it with the Street 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 Hu again, and it doesn't really affect me. No, I can't kill it with the Street Hint. Well, I'd have to top deck a land. Chaos Warp. The owner of Target Permit shovels it in his hand and reveals the top of his library. If it's a permanent card, he or she puts it. Then reveals the top card. Alright. Yay! He misses with it. And he. Why didn't he do that to a land? Why do his Boro Signet? Yeah, that just seems kind of bad on his part. He should have just done it to a planes. A planes is a permanent. Yeah. All right, because we'll, maybe I will cough this Mox Diamond next turn. 
Um, no, there's nothing worth it. Cancel. Okay, give me a land. That's actually good. Uh, so we could we could kill off the the Mox Diamond here, or we could kill off, or we could Skull Clamp. I think Skull Clamp is definitely the better card. So Skull Clamp, put it on our buddy Stringer Geist. Other than now Wild Wildfire, that doesn't give me a good target for it. But this should give us a land. There we go. There's a land. Land's a little slow now, though. So. Tack, tack. Are we, are we wanting to use this? Yeah, we're going to want to use that to get another thing that destroys an artifact. So, and then... Or a, or a cheap spell. So, use the Fauna Shaman. Well, this card. I can get any of these back. Probably the Siege Gang Commander. He's still too expensive. Um, this destroys an artifact. Yeah, I think that's the best one, right? Or Pride Mage does the same thing. Battle Mage for four. Pride Mage. Pride Mage is a little bit better, maybe. Yeah, we'll get the Pride Mage. And we'll go ahead and equip the Skull Clamp to um, Fauna Shaman. So two cards in hand. He's got to have like a Chroma. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Still one off from a Krama? How much is a Krama? Nine now. Wildfire for four. Does hurt. Gives me two cards though. Sunder and Titan doesn't hurt too bad because it kills a whopping one planes. So punted game one. Game two looks like it's going to be ours unless he some sort of shenanigans comes out. I mean, Wildfire by far is the worst card, yeah. All right, cool. Skull Clamp comes online, and we, we are good to go for the next while. All right. So Master of the Wild Hunt seems a little too slow and a little too bad against this matchup. Um, I'd rather have something more impactful. Even Avalanche Riders might be better because it, it sets him back uh, for getting that necessary... Tenth land or whatever, but probably not. Well, we could get, there could be a pretty good combo with this, and we could lock him out with Avalanche Riders and uh, Genesis. But Lone Lion Ranger of Eos seems very popular against his deck as well. I think I'm just going to go like this: put the Avalanche Riders out, take that. What else would be? I mean, even even then, if that's the case, then even like Huntmaster is too unimpactful. I mean, Lone Lion might be a little bit better. Ember Holler might be better. Chandra might be a lot better than like Huntmaster. I like Huntmaster though in this in this deck a lot. Chandra doesn't really her minus two doesn't do anything in this deck. It just copies the either a Rift Bolt or a Lightning Bolt. I don't think that's impactful enough to put in here. Um, I think I think we're gonna go like this. This is a great hand. A first node of Coddle into a second turn Wooded Foothills gets us a... Or just a... Actually, first turn Wooded Foothills into a Taiga. But no, I'd rather save it. I'd rather save the Wooded Foothills for a Sacred Foundry. See if he's got a crazy Mox Diamond Opal. There's a figure of Destiny again. There's our Lightning Bolt. So we could get, just get rid of it right now. But I think the best move is just go... Nakadal, 
a next turn Sacred Foundry swing for three. And we could actually Lightning Bolt off that figure of Destiny because he doesn't really have anything else in his deck that is decent to Lightning Bolt. So, in fact, I, sh I might have... I should have been siding those Lightning Bolts, I believe. Okay. So we take two here. So I, I do believe I should Lightning Bolt off this figure of Destiny before it becomes a 4-4, or in response. Wood of Foothills, sack it, go get the Sacred Foundry, yes, go to 15, but... Yeah, we keep this back, right? Because in, in response to him, dude, or is it automatically... Does it go on the stack? I don't even know how that works. I'm just going to lightning bolt it right now. Save myself a world of pain in case it doesn't work that way. I don't know why he'd sack it there for his, his greater, greater Gargon. So he plays nothing. Another forest, that's fine. We'll swing in here with McCoddle again. Take him down to 14. Uh, I don't know what the best play here is. Just play the Mog War Marshal? Sure. I'll even pay its echo cost probably next turn. Throw it up here to see what it's got left. I think this hand is just going to be too quick for him. Especially if he's stuck on another land here. We, we draw to the land, we got Blood Braid Elf breathing down his throat next turn. Elspeth is also a card that's pretty, pretty messed up against him. It's a lot of... For five, what could he do for five? Sunburst two... So remove a four plus one plus one counters, target player draws three cards. He's not able to remove four though. I don't know. Yeah. Not the best for him. So do we play it here? I don't think so. So we're not gonna pay his echo cost. Let him die. Get another one one. Remove four plus one plus one counters. Sun what does Sunburst do? So can we just Rift Bolt this? And again, he doesn't sack it. He just passed the turn. Get it for four. He's down to a ten. Come on, another land for Blood Blade. Blood Blade or Face Fetters, we're good. Damn it, Johnny. Okay, he's forced to use the Nicodle. Well, that's a decent card. Good haster. So that just takes him back from that. So let's attack Johnny. Attack him. He's down to a 10 again. One of these days we are going to draw a land. Preferably a non-forest land. Three cards in hand, two cards in hand now. Doesn't have double white for any sort of double white shenanigans. Stringer guys has some resilience here. Wildfire hurts him as much as it hurts me. At this point, it does clear out all my lands. Man. All of our four drops and above down to a six. Does Wildfire do damage? I can't remember if it does damage to players as well. I don't think it does. Alright, so that, that hurts me a ton. But it hurts. My, my Stringer Guys comes back though. So he's got a two turn clock. 
got all this nonsense in my hand though that that is horrible. I mean, he's got to get rid of a uh, mountain, mountain, mountain plains. Oh, so Misha's workshop, mountain, mountain, and plains, and so it ends up actually doing as much damage to him as it does to me. Except I gotta now draw into quite a few lands in a row. And that's not a land. But I mean the stranger guys should just could just get us here. And he's down to one card. He's hoping that his his Gargadon can can come out and win this. Technically, he could get it out here by sacking all of his lands. Alright, so he just concedes there. He doesn't have anything. I get eight cube tickets, so that is that a free cube? So I get a free cube out of this. Nothing else. So it was fun. I had fun. And, uh, yeah. This is Kevin from RogueDeckBow.com. Thanks for watching.